There is a popular fun fact about the founder of the Mongol Empire, Chinggis Khan, claiming that the conqueror is the ancestor of more than 16 million men, or 8% of the population of the wider region. But is that true? In this video, we'll try to use modern genetic studies to deduce if the great Khan was as prolific as the internet fun facts like to portray him. The life of Chinggis Khan is full of mysteries, and one of the most curious of them about his tomb is spotlighted in an awesome documentary by the sponsor of this video, Magellan TV. Explorers and historians have been looking for said tomb for centuries, and this documentary follows a French team as it penetrates the sacred lands of northern Mongolia to explore the Burken Khaldun mountain site with drones, scans, and the latest digital tools. Magellan TV is recommended to all history buffs as it has hundreds of historical documentaries. You can join us and watch this documentary by using our link in the description. However, Magellan TV has much more than that. There are more than 3,000 documentaries waiting for you, and hundreds of them are on the history of various eras. New ones are added weekly, and all of them are in 4K and available on most devices, including phones and PCs. Magellan TV has a kind and exclusive offer for our viewers that we highly recommend you take advantage of. Click the link in the description and get a one-month free trial and watch hundreds of history documentaries anytime, anywhere. At the start of the 21st century, a study was released which brought the 13th century starkly into the present. A 2003 study led by Chris Tyler Smith determined that an unusual number of men across Asia, from China to Uzbekistan, carried the same haplotype on their Y chromosome, indicating a shared paternal lineage. 8% of the studied group, just over 2,100 men, shared this haplotype, which, if representative of the total world population, would have come out to about 16 million men. This is far beyond what is to be expected of standard genetic variation over such a vast area. The researchers traced the haplogroup to Mongolia, and with the Batwing program, determined that the most recent common ancestor lived approximately 1,000 years ago, plus or minus 300 years in either direction. The study determined that this could only be the result of selective inheritance, and there was only one man who fit the profile who had the opportunity to spread his genes across so much of Asia and have them be continuously selected for centuries to come. That was Chinggis Khan, founder of the Mongol Empire. Identifying him with the Y chromosome haplogroup, the C3 star cluster, the image of Chinggis Khan as the ancestor of 0.5% of the world's population has become irrevocably attached to his name and a common addition in the comment sections of any Mongol-related topic on the internet will be the fact that he is related to 1 in 200 men in Asia today. Yet recent studies have demonstrated that this may not be the case, and that Chinggis Khan's genetic legacy is not so simple as commonly portrayed. Inside each human being are the genes we inherit from our parents. Distinct alleles within the thousands of genes of our 23 chromosomes affect the makeup of our bodies, from our physical appearances to blood type. Each allele is inherited from our parents, who inherited from their parents, and so on, leaving in each human being a small marker of every member of their ancestry. Due to interbreeding and mixing over time, people living in a certain region will share alleles, given that various members of their community shared ancestors at some point. A collection of these alleles is a haplotype, and a group of similar haplotypes with shared ancestry is a haplogroup. Tracing specific haplogroups attached to the Y chromosome, for instance, allows us to trace paternal ancestry of selected persons. It was the haplogroup dubbed the C3 star cluster that the researchers identified as Chinggis Khan's haplotype, though later research has redefined it to the C2 star cluster. Whoever carried the markers on their chromosome associated with this haplogroup, according to the study, was therefore a descendant of Chinggis Khan. The lineage, it should be noted, does not start with Chinggis Khan. It is detectable in the ancestors of Mongols dating back at least to the 5th century BCE, to the Donghu people in eastern Mongolia and Manchuria. It is found in high frequencies in populations which had close contact with Mongols, from Siberia to Central Asia 
such as the Buryats, Udigis, Evans, Evenks, Kazakhs, and in lower frequencies, in places conquered by the Mongol Empire. The 2003 study found that 8% of the men sampled had high frequencies of haplotypes from a set of closely related lineages, the C2 star cluster. With the highest numbers of this cluster found in Mongolia, it was the logical origin point for this cluster. Its frequencies in so many populations of the former Mongol Empire seemed to suggest it spread with Mongol imperial expansion. The researchers therefore identified Chinggis Khan and his close male relatives as the likely progenitors. While the public has understood this as Chinggis Khan and his family raping a massive percentage of the 13th century human population, this was not quite what the study implied. Rather, the selective marriage into the Chinggis's royal family, with each son having high numbers of children and so on for generations due to prestige associated with the lineage, was the cause for the haplogroup's spread. The study decided that, since the haplogroups showed up in high frequencies among the Hazara of Afghanistan and Pakistan, and as they were deemed to be direct descendants of Chinggis Khan, then this must have meant no one else other than the great Khan himself was the most recent common ancestor for this haplogroup. The high frequencies across Asian populations, an origin point in Mongolia, an estimated common ancestor approximately 1,000 years ago, and association with the supposed Chinggisid Hazaras was the extent of the evidence the study had to make Chinggis Khan the progenitor. However, as more recent studies have demonstrated, there are a number of problems with this evidence. Firstly, researchers have pointed out how indirect the evidence is for the connection of Chinggis Khan to the lineage. The estimates for the most recent common ancestor can vary widely depending on the methods used. While some estimates can place a figure within Chinggis Khan's epoch, other estimates put the most recent common ancestor for the C2 star cluster over 2,000 years ago, while the even closer estimation method still has a margin of error that could put the ancestor centuries before Chinggis Khan. One of the most serious assumptions in the study was that the Hazara of Afghanistan were direct descendants of Chinggis Khan. This is an assumption which rests more on misconception than medieval materials. In fact, the 13th and 14th century sources indicate that Chinggis Khan spent only a brief time in what is now Afghanistan, and not until the end of the 13th century were Chinggisid princes actually staying in the region. The sources instead describe waves of Mongol garrisons into Afghanistan, which began almost a decade after Chinggis Khan's death from initial Tama garrisons under Ugaday Khan's orders to Jochid troops fleeing Hulagu to Afghanistan in the 1260s. Together, this strongly suggests that the Hazara would not bear Chinggisid ancestry in any considerable quantity. Perhaps most prominently, there is little evidence to connect the C2 star cluster to known descendants of Chinggis Khan. The fact that no tomb of Chinggis Khan or any other known members of his family has been found means that there's no conclusive means to prove his haplogroups. Without human remains which undeniably belong to one of his close male relatives or himself, Chinggis Khan's own haplogroup cannot ever be identified. Most royal Chinggisid lineages in the western half of the empire, such as that of the Ilkhanate or Chagatais, disappeared long before the advance of genetic sciences. In Mongolia itself, massacres of the royal family such as the Oirat leader Esentashi in the 15th century and Soviet purges in the 1930s have resulted in comparatively few people today who can claim Chinggisid ancestry and support it with genealogical data as well. The 2003 study relied on a random selection of people from across Asia rather than looking specifically for individuals who claimed Chinggisid descent. Other studies which have sought out people who claim Chinggisid ancestry do not support the C2 star cluster hypothesis of the 2003 study. A 2012 study by Batbayar and Sabitov of Mongolian individuals who could trace their lineage back to Chinggis Khan's 15th century descendant, Dayan Khan, found none of them matched the star cluster proposed by the 2003 study. Burials of Mongolian nobility dating to the 13th century have had their surviving DNA examined which have always yielded alternative suggestions. 
one burial of extraordinarily wealthy individuals from the early 13th century in what is now Eastern Mongolia showed haplogroups associated with Western Eurasia, with effectively no descendants in modern Mongolian populations. However, as none of these graves can be conclusively linked to the members of the Chinggisid family, it remains speculative if these were not just wealthy generals and members of the military elite who bore no relation to Chinggis Khan. Naturally, other wealthy burials have revealed differing chromosomal haplogroups, providing no answer as of yet to the question of the Great Khan's own genetic lineage. Much like the 2003 study's erroneous connection of the Hazaras as direct descendants of Chinggis Khan, a more recent study demonstrates the pitfalls of attempting to connect historical figures to genetic data. A 2019 study by Xiaoqing Wen et al. looked at the Y chromosomal profiles of a family from northwestern China who traced their ancestry back to Kogen, a son of Chinggis Khan. Importantly, this family also backed up their claims with genealogical records and had maintained their place for centuries as they'd been made local officials by the succeeding Ming and Qing dynasties. This family, the Lu, not only did not match the C2 star cluster, but actually showed close affinity to other known descendants of Chinggis Khan, the Turek clan in Kazakhstan. The Ture traced their lineage to Janibek Khan, one of the founders of the Kazakh Khanate, and a 10th generation descendant of Chinggis Khan's firstborn son, Jochi. As the Lu family in China traced themselves to a different one of Chinggis Khan's son, the fact that the Lu and Ture belong to the same haplogroup, with a genealogical separation of about 1,000 years, suggests that if this is in fact the Y chromosomal lineage of Chinggis Khan, then Jochi's uncertain paternity could be laid to rest, and that he was a true son of Chinggis Khan. This theory is comfortable and convenient, but other scholars have noted that the connection of the Lu to Tokhan, the descendant of Kulgen, is very tenuous. The sources connecting the Lu clan to Kulgen's family were not compiled until the late Qing dynasty, some four to five hundred years after Tokhan's death. The sources more contemporary to Tokhan's life do not match the description of his life described in the histories used by the Lu clan, leading scholars to argue that, while the Lu clan does have Mongolian origin, and likely did have an ancestor with the very common medieval Mongolian name of Tokhan, it seems likely that at some point the Lu clan's family compilers decided to associate their own ancestor with the more well-known Chinggisid of the same name and therefore claim for themselves Chinggisid ancestry and prestige, hardly an unknown thing by compilers of Chinese family trees. Therefore, the matter of Jochi's paternity still remains uncertain. Perhaps the final nail in the coffin comes in the 2018 study by Lan Hai Wei et al. Compiling data from previous studies that found issues with the 2003 hypothesis, they looked at groups with high frequencies of the C2 star cluster, like the Hazara or the Dor, who, based on historical records, have no Chinggisid descent. Newer estimates also suggest that the most recent common ancestor for this lineage was over 2,600 years ago. In the most recent hypothesis, then, it seems more likely that the star cluster does not represent the lineage of Chinggis Khan but was simply an incredibly common paternal lineage among ordinary inhabitants of the Mongolian plateau. Its presence in other peoples across Asia was not evidence of selective breeding into the golden lineage, but simply the movement of Mongolian troops into a region and intermixing with the local population. In the case of the Hazaras, this is the exact scenario demonstrated by the historical sources with waves of Mongol troops, rather than a host of Chinggisids, descending into the Hazarajat. The possibility cannot be excluded, however, that while C2 star was a dominant haplotype in 13th century Mongolia, that before 1200 it had already been spread across Central Asia by earlier nomadic expansions of Mongolia-based empires like the Gurkturk Khaganates or the Uyghur. The Mongol expansion in the 13th century, then, would only be another wave of the spread of C2 star across Eurasia. While it is possible that Chinggis Khan and his close male relatives did in fact carry the C2 star cluster, there is no evidence which directly or conclusively connects him to it. 
his known descendants through the line of Dayan Khan, are of a different Y-chromosomal haplogroup. The descendants of Dayan Khan, himself a descendant of Chinggis Khan's grandson Kublai, and the Kazakh Ture, descendants of Chinggis Khan's son Jochi, bear haplotypes so distant that their most recent common ancestor is estimated to have lived 4,500 years ago, which does not fare well for the likelihood of Jochi being Chinggis's son. A third known and tested branch of the Shibandids in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan does not match the C2 star cluster, but has less than 1,000 known members and again are descended from Chinggis Khan via Jochi. Chinggis Khan then cannot be said to be the ancestor of 0.5% of the world's population, since his Y chromosomal markings remain unknown. Any attempts at identifying it conclusively can never be more than mere assumptions without finding the bodies of either the Khan or any of his close male relatives, a prospect highly unlikely given the Chinggisid's preference for secret graves. Thus it seems that his haplotypes are but one more secret that Chinggis will keep with him. We hope that videos on historiography and historical genetics are of interest to you. If you enjoy this one, make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see more. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description. To know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord, and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.